there seems to be this misunderstanding that wattage equals volume, and that's really just not true. The more watts you have doesn't necessarily mean the higher the volume you have, and in some cases, the more wattage you have, well, you're just putting your money in the wrong spots. So let's put it that way. Today, we're gonna to be talking about wattage and why manufacturers, well, are leading you astray. I mean, let's just be honest. Right now, if you take a look at a box and you wanna buy a speaker, a subwoofer, or even an amplifier, the higher the wattage, more likely you're gonna buy that. And you might be putting your money in really the wrong places. So watts are this confusing term. Uh, people just assume that the more wattage you have, the much louder your speaker is going to be. So for example, if someone went with uh, 10 watts compared to someone else that went with 15 watts, the person with 15 watts is going to have a much louder system. Or 100 watts to 200 watts, they're going to have a much, much louder system. And, you know, honestly, that's not the case. Not the case at all. So today we're going to be looking at this uh, with some terminology that you may not be accustomed to. So let's go ahead and explain some of that terminology. Uh, we're going to be talking about watts, and we're going to be talking about that in conjunction with SPL. Now, SPL isn't volume, okay? It stands for sound pressure level. However, in this video, to simplify things for you, we're going to equate it to volume because there is a loudness factor that SPL does equate to. In order for this illustration to work, we're going to make a couple assumptions right off the bat. We're going to assume that all of us have a subwoofer and we're looking for an amplifier for it. Our subwoofer is 83 decibels efficient and it we right now have a 100 watt amplifier and we're considering upgrading our amplifier to a much more powerful one. How does that equate to volume or loudness? In order to get a one decibel increase in SPL, you have to increase your power by 1.26 times. That means your 100 watt amplifier, you now have to buy a 126 watt amplifier just to get an extra SPL out of it. Which by the way, a one decibel increase is not much at all. In fact, that one decibel increase is what we would consider in the audio world the first time that you can hear a difference in a controlled environment. You and I are in a controlled environment, so the likelihood of us even hearing a one decibel difference, pretty slim. Doubling your wattage has to equal double your volume. I mean, after all, that's just what seems to make sense to most people. However, you'd be wrong. Doubling your wattage does not equal double your volume. In fact, doubling your wattage is only an increase of three decibels. This is the first time most people will be able to really hear a difference in volume. But notice I didn't say a significant difference in volume. For a significant difference in volume, you still have to multiply your power times four. So now that 100 watt amp flare has to be 400 watts and you'll finally get a significant difference in volume. But you're still not at double. In order to get double your perceived volume, you have to multiply that wattage by 10. That means that 100 watt amp flare now has to equal 1000 watts. Now you can start to see where this is becoming problematic. We're starting to add more and more power, but we're getting less and less in return. We're not getting quite that volume increase that we thought we would get. Really, in order to get that volume increase, we have to really increase the wattage. And this is where I start saying, some people are putting their money in the wrong places. You might be able to get a difference with the speaker you have right now, by getting a more powerful amplifier. How big of a difference? Well, that's going to really be determined by a couple of things. One of those things is the sensitivity of the speaker. Now remember, in the beginning, I said all of us have an 83 decibel speaker. The reality is not every subwoofer is 83 decibel sensitive, but every speaker will give you their sensitivity rating or should. Now, when you look at that sensitivity rating, it's gonna be in decibels and it's gonna usually say one watt per one meter or 2.83 volts at one meter. What that basically is saying is if you put a speaker and you give it one watt of sound, your microphone is one meter or around three feet away from it, what's the volume or the SPL that it will play at? Now, in our example, we had an 83 decibel speaker. We're gonna compare that to a speaker with a sensitivity of 100. Now, this isn't really considered efficiency, technically not, but think of it in that way, that the speaker with the higher SPL will be a little bit more efficient at turning that wattage that you've given it into volume. Once again, like I said, technically not volume and technically not efficiency. So let's go ahead and put this in a program. In this program, we're gonna be looking at WinISD. It's a free program, you can download it and explore it yourself. 
what we're gonna do is start giving an 83 decibel sensitive speaker and a 100 decibel sensitive speaker a little bit of different wattage and see what happens. Now we already know one watt's gonna give the 83 decibels 83 SPL and the 100 is gonna get 100. But what does it take to get that 83 decibel speaker up to the 100 decibel one watt speaker? Well, it takes 50 watts. That means it needs 50 times the power to get to the same spot that 100 decibel speaker is already just playing one watt. That's a huge difference. It might not seem like a lot because it's just 50 watts, but when we start really putting it in terminology of 50 times the power, that's a big difference. So let's go ahead and take a look at that driver, the 100 decibel one, and give it 50 watts and see where it goes. Now if we take a look at it, it's up to 117 decibels. The 83 decibel takes close to 2400 watts before it comes anywhere close to 117 decibels. That is a huge difference. So what you'll notice is a lot of manufacturers and marketers will really drive home that wattage number, but they hide that SPL number, mainly because I think they don't really think that you'll understand it and honestly, the wattage number is what sells, when in reality, it shouldn't be what's selling. You need to take, in conjunction, the SPL with the wattage. Now, if you don't believe me, just take a look at Ronnie Smith. I was talking to Robert Hi-Fi Vega recently and was talking to him about some of the higher sensitivity speakers, and he was saying, hey, Ronnie Smith, back in the day, back in the 90s, I believe he said it was, used to use a 100-watt amplifier and some very high sensitive speakers and was blowing away the SPL competition. He was winning medals left and right. Why? Because he understood that this concept, that he didn't necessarily just need wattage, he needed a good blend between sensitivity and wattage. Now keep in mind, I'm not saying to go buy the most sensitive speakers, but what I am saying is that when you're looking at these numbers, keep in mind that that wattage is directly tied to that sensitivity. If you have an 83 decibel subwoofer you're looking at, and maybe a 92 decibel subwoofer that you're looking at as far as sensitivity goes, it might be worth looking into that 92 decibel and seeing if it will do what you want it to do. You can save some money on your amplifier, or if you want to get the same amplifier and give it the same amount of power, well, that more sensitive speaker will give you higher volume or more SPL. So if you're into competitions like those SPL competitions, that's definitely a huge benefit. All right, guys, now I hope that you kind of understand that when you're shopping for subwoofers, when you're shopping for speakers, whenever you're shopping for any of this audio equipment, don't take watts as your final answer. A lot of marketers want you to just believe in that wattage number, think that wattage equals volume, it doesn't. And I hope that you understand that now. Now, some of you guys want to probably further explain and maybe even re-explain how some of the things that I talked about wasn't quite technically correct, such as volume and the word efficiency when those aren't really necessarily correct. Do that in the comment section. You can go ahead and explain more of that for the people that really, really want to understand technically what is going on. Go ahead and do that. There are people that want to know that. Now for the rest of you guys that want to talk more, feel free to get on the discussion board at toidsdiyaudio.com slash community. We have a forum there. We'd love to have you on there. Now that's all I have for this video. This is Toids DIY Audio and I'm out to make more things. In fact, I'm gonna be making some subwoofers, some pretty cool subwoofers. I have a really neat one that's coming in, 12 inch, you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Beefiest motor I have ever seen. Awesome, awesome subwoofer and high efficiency for a subwoofer. It's pretty exciting, I think you're gonna like that. Oh, and check this out. This is a four inch mini subwoofer by Cartesian Audio. Now, if you're not familiar with Cartesian Audio, you probably shouldn't be. They're new to the DIY community, uh, French company, really, really high quality stuff. They actually use a carbon fiber cone. You can take a look at that surround. I mean, that thing is one beautiful driver. I have that coming up along with some other products from Cartesian. I think you're gonna be really excited about that company. I'm gonna do a video on them exclusively. Check this out. This is the W5 that I love so much hooked up with a passive radiator. Yeah, it's a big passive radiator because this thing moves a lot of air. This sounds amazing. So I'm gonna have a voxel style subwoofer out with this with the passive radiator and the Dynas. They're gonna get this upgrade because this is an awesome upgrade. All right, guys, I'm excited to bring this to you. I hope that you subscribed and if not, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell so you get instant notification. I'll see you guys later. I'm out for real this time.